Do you ever notice when things happen in your life that can be distracting, disappointing, even a possibility of feeling angry about it? You get yourself out of it. You do get yourself out of it, yes. Why would you want to stay stuck feeling cruddy? You get yourself out of it, usually with the same words all the time. Some of the words I use very often is, this too shall pass. Another set of words I do is, I can do this. I know I can. There were six magic words that Earl Nightingale used. In fact, his very famous book was called The Six Words to Success. Do you know what those six words are? I'll be back in a minute and tell you. Hi, I'm Reverend Allie Bierman, and I'm so glad you joined us here today for the Let's Get Metaphysical show. Let's get metaphysical. We want to find out what are the invisible forces driving our life in each moment, not just now and then, but every single moment, because we're getting messages from our guides, from our angels, from our entities. And I'm here to show you how to tune in and make your life easier. Let's continue. Earl Nightingale wrote the book, Six Words to Success, because he noticed that he kept telling himself the same six words, which are, are, you are what you think about. Now, a whole bunch of thought leaders all through the years said something similar. Some said, you are what you think about most of the time. You are what you think about all of the time. But what are they meaning? What's going on? And is it just your thoughts that are running your world? It would seem so if you went back, because if you looked all the way back at Plato and Aristotle, all the way through the years of Harvard and wrote, As a Man Thinketh, Bob Proctor, Neville, Goddard, Troward, Joseph Murphy, the list goes on and on and on and on. And they're all saying the same thing. Are they all saying the same thing? Because... They've been reading each other, which they probably were. Or is it a feeling where they're just really truly coming from their heart, which is what a metaphysical ministry is all about. You don't come from your mind, you come from your heart, because that's what tunes in to the world of creation and manifesting. But I want to share with you something that you're probably not aware of. In the dozen or so books that I've read recently by all of those authors, because I was looking to see what messages carry, what they're not talking about is how you're influenced by what other people are thinking. And thinking isn't quite the power of the feelings that are going into the thinking because you're never going to manifest anything unless there's feelings, emotions going in with what you're envisioning for yourself. How did I discover what I'm about to talk about? I love to do in-person classes. As soon as I figure out where I can do it here and get the people in the class, I'll be able to show you the kinds of classes that I enjoy doing because people are always surprise. So as a specialized kinesiologist, I can turn muscles on or I can turn them off. So if somebody is doing a test and they're saying, put out your arm and they're testing you strong or they're testing you weak, well, they know and they can control to a degree unless you're skilled by what you're doing, kinesiologist. However, I can turn it on or I could turn it off. And the person has no way of knowing whether they're strong with the arm going down or they're strong with the arm holding up. Only I know and I don't share that with anybody because I don't want the audience, the participants to know what's going on. I want everything to be accurate. So what I love to do is bring someone up who is a volunteer and test them to see what's a yes uh, in terms of what their arm's doing and what's a no. And when we have it clear, 
Then what I do is I tell everybody who's out there, like you're out there right now, I'll say, when I hold my finger up, and if you're watching, it's a thumbs up. Person's, it's above the person's head. And I tell them, when I do a thumbs up, you don't have to say a word, don't change your expressions, just think, just think the word yes. And I'll test the person and see whether they're getting a yes or a no, strong or weak response. And sometimes I'll do a thumbs down. Again, the person who I'm testing cannot see whether it's an up or a down. And when a down is, what do you think it is? It's think the word no. It's that simple. Think the word yes, think the word no. I don't have to make up a whole sentence. I don't have to ask them to state their name, to state a wrong name. Just the word yes or no is changing your body chemistry. Well, one day I was working, teaching a class like that, and the person like didn't respond to anything. Nothing that I did caused any kind of change. And I was quite frankly puzzled. So I asked her, what are you looking at? And we happened to be in a meditation room that was filled with symbols and things that had meaning for her. And that was all she could deal with. So she wasn't paying attention to anything I was doing with her because she was so focused on symbols in the room. So when I asked what she was looking at and she figured out, oh, I'm looking at these symbols, I asked her to close her eyes. When she closed her eyes, the yes, no thing worked really, really well. So that doesn't just happen when you're in a room, in a controlled room. It happens when you're out and about. When you walk by somebody, you don't even have to look them in the eye. You're having an energy exchange. It's a good idea to know how to just put protection of your own energy all around you when you go out, because you don't know who's got what kind of emotions going on, and you don't want it transferring to you. Many years ago, when I was involved with the landmark education people, and I led one of their introductory classes, and I was very aware that you go in because you're participating in the class or a seminar or something like that, the first thing you do is you meet one-on-one -on -one with somebody before you go in and get with everybody else. And you just share anything that was frustrating you, that would be impacting your mood, that would keep you from being 100% present at the class that you came to be part of. And boy, could you imagine if everybody did that, if every business did that, it would make such a huge difference. Because how often do people come into work and they're either not feeling well or there's something, a crummy experience happened or they had a fight with their partner. All of that's in their energy. It doesn't go away. It's in their energy. They might be trying to suppress it, but guess what? It's still there. And it's impacting everybody in the office. So if you're ever at work and you notice, gee, the energy doesn't feel good today, or maybe you don't think in terms like the energy is or isn't, but you might notice people aren't quite in the same pleasant mood, helpful mood. Something's off. Be aware of your energy. Be aware of how to protect your energy, because all you got to do is walk by somebody on the sidewalk, and in that split moment, you are exchanging energy. How else does energy get exchanged? If you're wearing jewelry, what's the jewelry made of? Who owned it before you? Who is handling it? Are you sharing it with somebody else? Is it made from a particular stone because every stone has its own frequency. That's by nature. That's why I call the jewelry that I make and sell naturally 
energy infused because I'm not changing the frequency in each of those stones. Nature makes them that way. So if somebody else is borrowing a piece of jewelry or borrowing a piece of clothing, guess what? Energy's being exchanged again. Have all these things in your awareness because it can explain why you feel one way, one moment, and a different way, another moment. You haven't changed your thoughts and you haven't changed your feelings. Now, you may know somebody who likes to complain. And if you're like me, as soon as I become aware that somebody likes to complain, I choose to avoid them because I don't need to have my energy drained. And I know how to protect myself, but I don't want to hear the thoughts because a person's word choice tells you where their emotions are, where their feelings are. Because thoughts are powerless until you put feelings with them. Now, if you've ever met somebody and they tell you a story that happened a long time ago, like maybe from their childhood, and the next time you're with them, they tell you the same story. Or they're complaining about somebody in their life. If a person's complaining and say, so-and-so did this to me, they said that to me, there's no way that they can see or get that kind of feeling or angry response unless it's within them, they know it, and therefore they're projecting it out on the other person. And the other person may no way, know how, be saying something nasty or off to them. If you find yourself thinking about another person, having angry thoughts, having, do you know somebody? Everything in the world is somebody else's fault. This person believes everybody in the world is accusing him or doing something wrong or being mean to him. I know you know somebody like that. And the thing is, they're basically in their own little world and they're not wanting to acknowledge that they have those feelings. They're not wanting to live in conscious awareness of what they're putting out to the universe. And in fact, especially people who go mowing over and over and over and over all the hurt, what they're doing in their mind <laughs> is they're staging little scenarios that they're having arguments or fights are really negative experiences with that person. So they can't even tell the difference between what's real in their world and what's imagined. So they may never ever speak aloud to this person about any of the issues, but they're having a doozy of an argument <laughs> attacking the other person who they believe is attacking them. There are very, very, very many ways that energy out there that's not your energy is impacting you. Now, I'll tell you one great way to protect yourself, besides knowing anybody else's stuff is anybody else's stuff, it's not yours. When you smile, literally smile, your whole face, you're changing your energy. And you're impacting other people in a good way, in a loving way. And you're going to feel better. Most people in my own informal survey, six out of 10 people will feel better too, just because they saw your smile. In fact, they will smile too. How else can you take care of yourself? Well, be sure that you're hydrated because nothing's going to work right in your thinking if you're dehydrated and your body can't use water unless it's got minerals in it. 
something like Himalayan salt, Redmond salt, um, packets, and be sure there's no sweetener or other. That can be really yucky, yucky, yucky ingredients when you're buying these so-called energy drinks. So just get a pure water, put mineral salt in it, and be sure you're getting enough for your body weight, whatever you weigh. You take it half of, let's say somebody weighs 120 pounds, you divide that in half, 60 pounds only, you translate that into 60 ounces. That's how much water you want to drink over the course of a day. And be sure you go over to my site so you know how to test yourself so that you can test how much of the electrolyte of the Himalayan salt you need in your body a day. Because you don't need a lot, but you also need more than a little sprinkle. And you don't want to take somebody else's advice. You want to test yourself. So there'll be a link down there to show you exactly how to do that. As I said before, I'm Reverend Allie Beerman, and you're with us here today for the Let's Get Metaphysical show. And I want to make sure to get across to you all of the opportunities that you have because you're here with me now. Well, for one thing, start with going to our show site where you can watch or listen to any of our episodes. You can also go over to our Facebook group. You have a question, you want to make a friend, you want to let me know what you want to talk about or what you want me to talk about, join the Facebook group. When you join A-L-I-T-L-C dot club, that's a private membership. That's where I do webinars and put in some extra videos that I'm not sharing with anybody else. Today, I have a special gift for you. And it's all about affirmations, because I've been talking about energy. And when you're feeling kind of down or confused or disappointed, you might want to speak an affirmation. And if you do it like most people do it, there's a really good chance that your affirmations will never become your reality. I made an affirmations quick guide, and it's just a couple of minutes that explains the basics about how to speak an affirmation, and you'll find the link to get that in the show notes. Be sure to go on over and take advantage of Audible's gift for you. And if you look up any of these authors who are talking about mindset, it's like I said, they're all saying the same thing. There's Plato, there's Aristotle, there's James Allen, Bob Proctor, uh, Neville, Thomas Troward, Joseph Murphy. Some of them get a bit into religious stuff. So that's why I'm giving you a whole bunch of names. Find something that works for you, but be sure it's your choice. And don't just follow what other people are doing, what other people are telling you are the important things to follow. Because just because a lot of people are doing it doesn't make it a fit for you. So go into Audible, uh, follow my link, choose the audiobook of your choice, and take advantage of that 30-day free trial. So all kinds of amazing stuff. There are incredible podcasts in there, including this one, that you won't find any place else. I thank you again for being here with me today. And oh, you notice I'm still using the patches. My hair is getting darker and darker every week. I'm thinking eventually it's going to go all the way back to my natural hair color, which I'm looking forward to because I used to make my jewelry using gold, um, 14 karat gold. And that just doesn't look good on hair like this. Oh, let me throw this out. This is an interesting fact. 
when I work on people, sometimes people don't have the cash to pay me for my services. I'm really good and I'm really expensive. And sometimes if I'll do something that maybe only takes an hour, I will take gifts from them because gifts are really special. So I've gotten payment for in magnificent art, just beautiful original art, one of a kind nobody has. I've gotten jewelry. I've gotten a pair of Birkenstock sandals, just a lot of really fascinating things. I'm sure there are oh, photography, all kinds of really cool things. And because they're special, when I work with somebody, when I work on somebody, I feel, well, there's no such thing as time or distance. So I feel a deep connection with them. So when they give me one of those items, I treasure it. So it's worth it to me. Now, if I'm doing my full on enjoy life, that takes lots of time, lots of energy. And that one, you're going to have to find a way to pay me that in money. However, I can do a lot of things for you if you just want pieces, <laughs> pieces of your life to fall into place. Remember to enjoy, that's capital I-N, capital J-O-Y, every moment. Because nothing in your world happens outside of you. It all happens actually in your heart. You have a lot more messages going heart to brain than brain down. And I look forward to being here with you next time.